diggity, another unboxing video. This one is a receive-only loop, this time from uh, Larry Plummer, W6 LVP, in Santa Paula, California. It's a beautiful, beautiful town. I've been there. And this is similar in concept to the MFJ uh, antenna that's a three foot diameter loop, but it's rigid, so it's hard to ship. This one is designed to be uh, more portable. And after Larry saw my review of the MFJ, he'd asked if I'd take a look at this thing. So this came by uh, FedEx yesterday and is I think probably going to be quite a treat. Um, loops are very popular these days and a lot of people are willing to put up with their their difficulties such as the fact that they have very very narrow uh, tuning bandwidths but um, they're small and they're quiet and, and I'll show you how quiet they are. Okay right here we have some antenna instructions. Here is a um, setup and operations guide with the power inserter version. The power inserter is what MFJ calls a bias T. Um, so these are nice instructions. It's nice of him to print these in color uh, and have them available. Now this bubble wrap, uh, because of the altitude here, this bubble wrap tends to expand, which is why the, uh, the case was bulging. Right here, we have the basic antenna, okay? And this is, this, the antenna is going to come down, actually like this, okay? And this part right here is going to be spread out. Now, he does this differently. His has these little BNC connectors at the end, rather than uh, PL259. So I'm going to have to uh, get an adapter because... All my cables are got PL259s on them. Lots of bubble wrap. Everything in here is wrapped very carefully. This right here is the part of the stand. This, by the way, is made of a uh, very hard, I think he calls it furniture grade plastic. Uh, and in here, in this little box right here, is the uh, little preamp because the signal for one of these loops without a tuning capacitor is very broadband, but rather weak. So if you put the uh, amplification right here, low noise amp, right at where the amp ends, you get a signal out here that's rather magnified and very broadband, extremely broadband. Okay, now we have here two different little devices. This right here, the bias T, what the bias T does is it puts some, uh, a DC voltage on the line going to the preamp. And I've shown in previous videos, videos how the RF and DC can take different paths. So what we have right here is to the radio, this goes to uh, the regular transmit antenna. This goes up to the receive loop. And right here you have to put in the push to talk that comes out of the back of the radio that would be used for an amplifier if you had one. Now, if you do have an amplifier, you can use the other one here to relay that push to talk back over to the amplifier. And over here on the end is the power uh, injection for that. I don't know if there's any LCDs yet, haven't plugged it in. Uh, this right here does have an LCD. It's the same kind of thing but it's more like the MFJ in that it only provides the uh, juice for the antenna preamp itself. It does not protect the antenna from uh, transmitting. So this is the way the MFJ works. They call this a bias T. This does exactly the same thing. Puts 12 volts out here where it can be used by the preamp. This is for receive only. You'd use this if you were a shortwave listener, or if, like me, your HF radio can use a different input for the receive-only antenna, and then another input for the transmit. If you've got a radio like the very popular ICOM 7300, it only has one 
antenna receptacle on the back, one uh, SO239. So you'd connect that here to the radio and then the push to talk, which you have to derive from one of the, uh, one of the plugs on the back, and uh, then this thing will work for you, which is pretty nice, I think. Now he does talk in there about how when you put these uh, things on your, th these little connectors on your antenna, when you put those on, you should uh, tape them down with electrical tape. So he gives you an entire roll of electrical tape to do that. Vinyl electrical tape uh, by Tartan. Okay. Uh, not a household name for electrical tape that I know. And then this is the AC adapter. It comes from Jamico. Uh, it's called a Reliapro. Jamico is one of the uh, electronic parts uh, supply houses. Uh, now that Radio Shack is gone, uh, just about everything's going to have to be mail order. This is huge. Uh, output 12 volt DC at 500 milliamps. Okay, so that's uh, 6 watts, which is way more than this needs. So this will be sturdy. Uh, it talks in the instructions about how you can just power this from your 12 volt, uh, your 12 volt system in the shack, which would go right in here. And this has the correct uh, connector to go in there. Very common connector that you'll see uh, throughout ham radio. So here we are. The next step is to set it up. Now there are two use cases that we're going to look at here. One is the use case where you can't put up an effective transmitting antenna, but maybe you can put a uh, transmitting antenna in the attic uh, where it can be the right length and where you can tune it and where you can pump quite a fair amount of, amount of power into it. And then outside is a hidden uh, loop. It's a loop, of course this is folded back on it, but the loop is three feet in diameter and it can be tucked kind of anywhere in the backyard. I saw a picture of one that had a, a birdhouse hanging from it just so that it would look like it was there and had plants growing around it and so on. So that's the stealth application, okay? Now the next uh, uh, application, the next uh, use case, is if it, you can go ahead and put up an outside antenna with all that entails, get it tuned just right, transmit uh, whatever power that you want, and then have this separate loop a little ways away from the main antenna because the loops are so quiet. They don't pick up a lot of the common mode uh, type of, uh, you know, like lightning and static and things like that, and uh, do tend to be very quiet. I was uh, using the MFJ1 earlier today, and boy, what a difference. So this is what we're going to set up and test. Let's take a look at the antenna stealthiness. I mean, the use case for this is to put a loop antenna somewhere it doesn't make a big statement. So out in the backyard, here are the two loops I have, the MFJ uh, loop here and the W6LVP uh, loop here. Both of these are receive only. They're very wideband. Uh, that's because they don't have a tuning capacitor. They just have a little preamp uh, down at the base of them here. Okay, so against the sky, they're both uh, quite visible. Now, let's see what happens when we uh, put this up against a tree. So, uh, standing back from the tree, we see that the MFJ loop is, is quite <laughs> bright against the dark uh, tree background. By the way, this is uh, exactly the same mounting situation I had before. I just moved to a different spot so I could get the uh, tree behind it. The MFJ loop has a very solid mounting system right here. It's got uh, uh, hardware here to really grab onto a mast um, and stay very solid. Now, if we look at the W6LVP antenna, it does a much better job of blending in with the background um, than the MFJ antenna. The, the black plus the... Um, coax that's used right here is a little bit uh, 
uh, thinner than the tubing used on the MFJ. Okay, the mounting system on here uh, is essentially non-existent. There's a, this piece of plastic here simply continues on down to about here and you are to mount to that. Okay, so what I did is here is a mast coming up here to about right here and I cut a piece of PVC pipe that was big enough to slip over the mast that was the extension of this bar there and also slip over the piece of metal that I had in there and I have some duct tape to kind of hold it in place. Uh, typical amateur response I guess for testing. Uh, it would be nice if there were some sort of a mounting system rather than just the blank piece of plastic uh, that is right there. But Definitely, the W6 LVP uh, package wins the stealth test. Well, that's all well and good, and definitely the stealth part is nice. But the proof is in the pudding. Let's see how the antennas work on HF uh, for reception. I'm using my main rig, the uh, Yesu FTDX 3000 here. Antenna 1 is the antenna under test, the uh, W6LVP, and antenna 2 is my station antenna, uh, the Butternut HF9V vertical with gobs of radials. It's my regular antenna. And then the third antenna is the MFJ. Now, what we're going to do is listen not only for strong signals, but weak signals. And in the background, uh, try to listen to how much background noise there is around a weak signal and so on. And then I've got some strong signal stuff in there too. Um, I think the bottom line that you'll see is that uh, the antennas perform about equally with the loops a little bit quieter and I think the W6 LVP loop is probably uh, the quietest of all by a little bit. Okay, this next test we're going to look at the ability of the loop to null a and a, a signal that is uh, on axis. I'll look here at a fairly strong voice signal. I'll look at a noise signal uh, and a data signal. 
and I think what you're going to find is that it will null out some signals but not others and sometimes that can really make a difference for you all these loops have a null if you view the loop as though it were a wheel on an axle in the direction of the axle both directions uh, there will be a null now sometimes that null can be very sharp other times it just doesn't work at all we'll, we'll, this is what we're going to show okay we've got a little setup over there on top of the barbecue it's a QRP uh, 40 meter I've uh, disabled the transmit on it I even took the power away from the power amp so it won't transmit into this antenna and we'll tune around a little bit on the 40 meter band and see how directional this is so let's do that Well, thank you so much for watching. This is a great antenna. It might be just the thing for you. It's a direct competitor to the MFJ. Of course, you could always say that the MFJ is a direct competitor to this antenna. I will point out that the workmanship on this is excellent. I wish it had better mounting provisions, uh, but I do like the quality of workmanship all the way through. So, do I recommend it? If you need to receive antenna and want to put it outdoors uh, and stealth is a requirement, then yeah, it's going to be a great antenna for you. It performs about as well as any other um, antenna, dipole, vertical, anything like that. I want to mention a couple things I've got uh, videos coming up on. I received from MFJ and SWR slash watt meter that's digital to take a look at. I also have a very weird TV antenna that came to me that I'm going to see if it might be usable on frequencies that hams use for television, uh, both digital and analog. And I've got one coming up, I think, on soldering PL259s, and got a whole bunch of them in the queue here. I'm looking forward to making videos and looking forward to hearing your comments about them. Until we next meet, 73.